Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to be making a pair of antlers. I'm going to show you guys how to sculpt it and which type of clay to use and stuff like that. I may have a tutorial here and there that show a little bit of antlers, but I recently found a really good way of doing it to where they're extremely strong and you don't have to worry about them breaking because obviously that's going to be something really fragile if you're making it out of clay. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the type of clay that I'm using for this project is called Epoxy Sculpt. It's basically resin in clay form, so when you're done it will cure and it'll be just as hard as resin, so it's super strong. And that's the main reason that I'm going to be using it to make my antlers, because I want them to be extremely strong and I don't want to have to worry about them breaking. So how you use this clay, it comes in part A and part B, you'll have equal amounts and basically you'll take how much you want to use equal amounts of both A and B and you'll blend them together. And you'll blend them together for about two or so minutes or until the color is one solid color because you'll notice that each part has a different tint to it. Now I do want to let you guys know that this product does have an allergy warning, so if you have an epoxy resin allergy or you just respond really strong to chemicals on your skin, I highly recommend wearing gloves and being really careful to not get it around your eyes. Okay, so I have my clay all blended together and I'm ready to start working on my antlers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the largest portion of the antler, the main body of it first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out some ropes. I'm going to try and have them the exact same length and I'm going to taper off the end of each one. That way it gets thinner as you go down the length of the antler. Now to get a more realistic shape, I'm going to have to try and have my antlers kind of curved. So to do this with the clay, I'm going to take a large bowl. I wrapped it in saran wrap, that way the clay doesn't stick to it. And I'm going to kind of lay out the shape of my antlers on the bowl on each side, making sure they're nice and even. And I'm going to let them cure on the bowl, that way they have that shape to them. But before I let that completely cure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut really tiny pieces of wire, roughly about half inch pieces, and I'm going to stick them into the clay to mark out where I'm going to add the other spikes to the antler. Also, this will help me kind of connect them and they'll hold their shape more when curing if they have a little bit of support. So I'm going to figure out where I want all of those to go and I'm going to lay them out on the clay. So now that we have the main body of the antlers done, I'm going to move on to making the spikes. So making the spikes is really simple. It's pretty similar to how we made the main body of the antler. We're just going to be working with a lot less clay. So I'm just going to be rolling out some smaller ropes and tapering off the ends of them. And I'm just going to make a bunch of different sizes of spikes. Now with the larger spikes, I figured we could actually add spikes to these as well, kind of have them forked off and add even more detail to my antlers. So I added some wires to these to add other spikes to them. And then the only other thing that I need to do to my spikes is add a hole to the base of them. That way they can slide over the wires that we have sticking out of the body of the antler. So I'm just going to add these little holes to the bases of all of my antler spikes. And then I'm going to let everything sit and cure. Usually it takes about 24 hours for this clay to completely cure. So I'm going to come back the next day and then we can start putting our antlers together. So I'm going to start with the larger spikes and adding the tiny spikes to these. So I'm just going to pick out which spikes I want to go where, figure out how I'm going to actually put the antlers together ahead of time, and then I'm going to start putting the spikes on the little wires that we have sticking out. So I'm going to mix up some more clay and I'm going to start blending everything together with this. So I'm just wrapping it around the base of the spike and I'm going to kind of blend everything together. Now blending this clay is actually a little bit more difficult than most clays. It kind of wants to like crinkle and crack a little bit. 
but I've found that if you dampen your tool just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny amount of water, it really does help to blend everything together and get a nice smooth surface. So you'll notice while I'm working, I have a tiny little container of water off to the side and you'll see me dipping my tool into it kind of frequently to add a little bit of moisture to the clay. So I'm just going to continue adding all the spikes together. I'm going to grab the main body of the antlers and start connecting everything to that. Now at a certain point I found that the spikes were kind of moving around so I needed to let everything cure for a little bit before I started adding even more spikes to it. So I kind of just laid everything out where it was holding its shape and I left it alone. And then once it was done curing, I went back to adding the rest of the spikes to the antlers. Once I had all of the spikes connected, I still had a little bit of clay left and I didn't want to waste it even though it was a really small amount because honestly this clay is kind of expensive. So I just added a few extra spikes here and there on the antlers with it. Okay, so it's the following day. My antlers are completely cured and they look honestly pretty good, but I want to clean them up just a little bit more. If you noticed where we blended the clay together, it's just a little bit kind of lumpy and that's mainly from where I had to rest the clay on the counter and it kind of just distorted it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a small amount of sandpaper and I'm going to kind of clean up those lumps. So I'm just going to smooth everything down and if you want to at this point you could also thin some areas out if you feel like the antlers are a little too thick. And like I said, you don't have to do this, but you can notice a pretty good difference between the two antlers after I sanded one, kind of just showing a little bit of a before and after. So I felt like it was really worth it to sand them. Okay guys, and here are our finished antlers. Well, kind of, I haven't painted them yet because I really don't know what I'm using them for yet, so I figured I'd just wait. But yeah, they're all like sculpted up and everything. They just need a paint job. And I'm really happy with these. Like, here, listen. Like, I would not do that with like my original Sculpey clay. They're extremely strong. Like, they almost have the same like texture and feel of real antlers right now. So like I could throw these up against the wall, I'm not going to, but I really could and like trust them to not be broken. <laughs> My wall on the other hand would probably have a few dents. So yeah, I highly recommend using epoxy sculpt for antlers and other little like fine detail that look really fragile but you want them to be like strong so they don't break. Anyways, you'll probably see these in a future video. I really want to use them soon so hopefully I can come up with an idea for them. I kind of roughly have an idea but I'm not going to say anything yet. But yeah, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to all that fun stuff and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!